Hi, so this is going to be a short video of student for, for students who are using Minitab to get the results for their project, and particularly the um, hypothesis testing for one sample. So here, if we go over to the project, um, you know, directions or instructions, we could see that we would want to go ahead and sign up on the Google um, sign up sheet to just enter a zip code. So here you can see already there's an array of students um, that put the zip code in the city. So uh, once again, like something like orange, orange has like six zip codes. So just because someone has done a city doesn't mean the zip code isn't there. So if you want, you could do a control F and find and just make sure no one's done that particular zip code because it's really about the zip code because you want to narrow down the area in which you take a random sample of housing prices. Okay, so here's the walk. And then the next thing would be to open up the walkthrough video as you're starting your project. So you could see here, this video is about 30 minutes. So I always say like a point a minute, right? So in this case, we're going to have about um, two and a half points a minute. So you're getting a big bang for your buck. <laughs> So as you watch the video and do it, um, the only difference will be I will be doing Microsoft Excel in the walkthrough video, whereas you'll be doing mini tab. So I think that's the only other than that. I do interpretation. I do all that other intermediate stuff. This video will just be like how to crunch it in mini tab. All right. So the next thing is go your go to that zip code, go to Zillow.com and follow the walkthrough video where you Google how to find the median housing price. That will be the population parameter. Once you have that population parameter and at least 30, because we're going to we need that for the law of uh, large numbers, um, 30 housing prices prices in that zip code from Zillow.com. You could use Redfin as well. I like Zillow just because it's a little more uh, like in, uh, expanded. So, um, and then at that point you can start the project. So you could see that you're going to claim a zip code and then insert a screenshot, um, into the threads text box. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and grab your da raw data like you did in the very first project with the, um, descriptive statistics and that city. Um, and you'll title the name and have the how, the median housing price found on Google. That is your population parameter you will use for your hypothesis test. So we're going to go ahead and skip down to number five where we have to conduct a descriptive statistics. So if we go here to my example post, you'll see that I went ahead and did exactly what I'm supposed to do so far with a little screenshot. And this little piece is going to look a little different. So what I'm going to do here is now open a new thread. There we go. <laughs> and I'll just show you essentially how you would do it in mini tab, do this number six in mini tab, screenshot it and put it in, right? And then how to find your p value here and confidence interval. So you'll need to do descriptive statistics with the confidence interval and then do a hypothesis test. So it's going to be a two parter. So here, um, if I go ahead and go to my mini tab now, notice that I have already put in the housing prices for Dana Point. And that's the one that you see in the walkthrough video of me entering in in Excel. Okay, so I have about 40, as you can see, pieces of data I randomly selected. And in order to do this first part with the descriptive statistics for this particular project, in Minitab, you would go to stat, go to basic statistics, and I would go to graphical summary. Um, in the variable box, if you click in, if it's empty, it'll bring up that first column. I labeled it housing prices in 92629. My confidence level required in the instructions here is 98%. Where is that? There we go. 98%. <laughs> so I'll leave it at 98% here. And I hit OK. So it's going to give me this like 
graph, which is really, actually really nice. Notice I actually have some outliers, right? It gives me like this tiny little box plot. It's really nice, but down here, kind of skip all the way down. So you'll see all these like similar things as in the walkthrough video. And then it says a 98% confidence interval for the mean and a 98% confidence interval for the median. We actually want the median, right? So that's what we're doing. We're using the median and because our data is at least 30, we'll assume that the population is approximately normal. And therefore, I can go ahead and copy this whole thing. And then when I go to my, you know, you'll have stuff before, obviously, but then you'll go ahead and just paste it in here. And it looks really nice and really cool. I would resize it so it's, you know, fitting to the eye. <laughs> I'm reading to not huge. Um, so just kind of zoom in a little bit, like make it a little bit don't small, not too small, but you know, just enough where you could read it on your screen. That's totally perfect. That's that. That this summary report for housing prices in 92629 takes place of this table here in number six. Okay, so this is number six, like that. <clears throat> okay. So here, notice like they have the confidence interval right here um, for the median. So the median, it would be we are 98% confident that the population median housing price for Dana Point in the zip code 92629 is 990 is in between $993,277 and $1,377,229. So this little piece right here. So again, you want the median one. Okay, so that's that piece. And then you'll take the confidence interval for number seven and then interpret it and in, um, in, in the next sentence. Okay, so now you, you would just identify, do number eight, just like the walkthrough. And then number nine is when you actually set up your hypothesis testing. So my median housing price from Google was $1,092,792. So that's gonna be my population parameter. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, claim that the actual median price is less than that, because that just seems like a lot of money to live in Dana Point. <laughs> So um, if I wanted to take this place, of num um, choosing a significance of alpha being 0 0.05, which would be a 95% confidence, um, and to find the p-value number 11. So I would do all that rest now, you know, 7 through um, 10, and then 11. So there's some numbers here, like 7, 8, 9, 10. And then number 11, I would have to come back to mini tab and go do a t-test, right? So hit stat, hit basic statistics, and you can go ahead and use one sample t. Now in the walkthrough video with Excel, Excel doesn't have a one sample t, Microsoft Excel only has a two sample t. So we use a z-test for there. However, the results become so similar because again, if we take at least 30 housing prices, that means that implies that our population is approximately normal and there's a really a really minute difference between the two. So in this case, in many tab, the advantage is we get to use a one sample T. We actually get that opportunity. So go ahead and click that. Now it does say one or more samples in each column. So I would go ahead and select that and um, if and then click into this entry box and select the column of housing prices. And it should I double click it and it brings it in. Um, this if it, this is unchecked, check it right. Perform hypothesis test, and the hypothesized mean is that Google that number one step that one that's in your thread the title right. The one million dollars uh, ninety two thousand seven hundred ninety two is my a population median housing price for Dana Point. Now here there's the, if you want to click these, click them, your computer won't explode. Students are always afraid to click, but you can go ahead and if you want to see like a histogram or box plot, you can, you really don't need to because notice that in your summary plot, you already had it. So it's not that big of a deal to have to do graphs. 
Your options, though, will be nice because you want to put in the confidence level. Since we had an alpha that was 0 0.05, that means the confidence level was 95%. So I put 95. My alternative hypothesis, I said that that median housing price of 1092000 was, I said it, it was probably less than, right? Mine was a left tail test. You choose whatever you like, okay? And hit OK. So at that point, you can just hit OK. It'll bring it up. So here is um, the descriptive statistics, which we don't need, but we do need the test. So notice this is so nice. It brings up like your um, hypothesis test and the T value and P value. What you need is just the P value. Since your alpha was 0 0.05 and your, your P value definitely looks greater than your alpha, right? So if you just go ahead and hit this down arrow, hit copy. We'll go ahead and I'm gonna hit enter one more time and then paste. So here you can just do this um, on the table. If you wanted to do like a grid, gridded table, you can always click table properties and um, it does actually does a really nice job of pasting like this. So um, it's just really up to you how you wanna format that. But what we really just need is this p-value. And then notice in my example, my p-value was the same, right? And it was greater than the alpha, so we couldn't reject the, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you can follow the walkthrough video for all those in-betweens. Again, this video is just specifically for how to do number six and number 11 in mini tab. Um, and that's pretty much it. So you'll fill all this in, but this is nice summary report. I like this a lot. And then the um, number 11, I once again, you would just go to the stat, basic stats, and go to the one sample T. Okay, and I hope that helps, and I look forward to reading your projects.